introduce yourself uh, and then uh, it's over to you. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much for the kind introduction. Uh, let me share my screen here. And can everybody see my screen all right? We should see an empty R Studio canvas. Is that not yet? Oh, I still need to hit the share button, I guess. Oh. Yeah, we can see it now. Yeah. Um, and I'm starting typing now. Is that all right? Can we see that? Yeah, all yes. right. Thank you very much for that confirmation. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So um, thank you very much for the kind introduction again, uh, Mohammed, and also thank you very much for using the package. I mean, um, I think um, all first of packages are just as grateful for people using them than the other way around, because uh, nothing excites you more than the thing you actually came up with and uh, yeah, played around with for a bit and then decided to release to Grant that it is actually used by people. That's uh, the biggest excitement you can get actually as a package author. Um, so I'm going to talk you through a little bit about uh, through my package. Um, uh, assuming that not everybody um, did attend the meeting of the presentation that I gave earlier, I'm going to um, work with the emergency data set. Um, that is part of the uh, pattern package. So let's load in pattern. Uh, and then you see there's the uh, emergency data set that ships with better. But actually, um, I found that there is a more recent version that's a little bit more complete. So I downloaded that by hand to have a little bit more data in it. And I will load that. Um, by the way, everything that I use and that I show today will be posted on my GitHub. Um, I shared a link to that in the chat previous to the meeting. I'm not sure everybody can find that. Um, because you joined later. I'm not sure how that works with Zoom, but otherwise we'll uh, reshare it after. So that's also including this data set if you want to play around with it. Um, and the data that we're going to work with is uh, it's called emergency, and that's because it's a bunch of emergency calls um, from a Montgomery County. Uh, which is a county in the U.S. It's um, kind of a suburb of Philadelphia. And it has just a few interesting columns for us. So that's a description of the emergency. Um, uh, the title of the emergency. So that's basically a special case of this one. The timestamp, most importantly, of course, because we're going to work with timestamps here. And also the town part. So that's... Um, part of the county uh, specifying this and because it's my bread and butter and also because most people are familiar with it i'm going to use the tidy first um so spatter was designed to play nice with the tidy first i'm a i'm a fan i'm not gonna lie so um it's not the only thing i use but for like interactive analytics for which better is also specifically designed i really like to use the tidy first um, and better was designed and inspired by the tidy first and also designed to play nice with it. So I'm going to use that to illustrate how the functions that we're going to discuss will fit in into a tidy first analysis. But if you choose to use something else, then of course better can still be useful. It's not part of it, to make it very clear. Um, but it's um, it basically copies a little bit the same design philosophy. All right, so let's load those. And I think I already loaded the data, but let's do that again. Um, let's only grab the uh, columns that we are going to work with for now, which is the title and the timestamp. So we make put our selection and we're going to just have a look at what's in there. So I'm going to count the title and sort it so that it sorts from high to low. No, that's not what I want. And let's have a look at that. All right. So you see a lot of vehicle accidents and uh, another, uh, what is it more? vehicles fire alarm full victim all right um in this case we're gonna work something with something that's a little bit um 
uh, sparser so that we have a little bit few data points for and that's going to be the assaults I think it's somewhere down here yeah assault victim um it's also maybe a little bit more exciting than somebody with a uh, heat exhaustion I don't know so we're gonna select from the original set Make it a little bit easier and we're gonna um is everybody familiar with the pipe operator by the way um if not please shout out then i'm happy to explain it but i also don't want to over explain things so sometimes i assume things are clear if they're not please shout out i'm happy to give I a quick explanation on how things work I, I think most people are used to the other pipe operators so yeah right yeah this is Thank you. yeah yeah, it, it works exactly the same thing. So this is now from, I think, our version 4.1 or 4.0. I'm not sure. Uh, R has a base pipe operator implemented. So you don't no, long, no longer need to um, uh, load to thing from a grid arm or from, which is also part of dplyr. Um, so actually, I've now set this as my base pipe operator, but you can also use still the, 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 the thing from a grid arm. So it works the same thing. It's just now part of base R. Um, and for the title, I think, what was it? Uh, was it? I wrote it down somewhere here so that I don't have to get awkward moment. It's EMS assault victim. Oh. No, that should be in here. Mm -hmm. Yes, I meant that. Thank you. All right, so now we have nothing. Actually, maybe assault is spelled incorrectly. Is it? Yes. Two S's will be sufficient. Thank you very much for pointing that out. Yes, there we go. So we have a set with all the assault victims. For the moment, we ignore the town part. And um, the reason I work with the data set is that it's one of the few public data sets that resembles the data that you and I are typically confronted with. That is uh, data with records noted with a timestamp. This is on the second level. Um, if you work with like uh, web events that I usually do, there's even on the microseconds. And this is fine for like having a log of your events. But it's typically very unhelpful when you're working with uh, daytime data for analysis. So I refer to um, daytime data, so that in, uh, that it's just that's the dates, but also what we call POSIX, right? So I think of them as one type of data. So strictly, they're not, of course, but they're representing a moment in time, and. Um, to demonstrate the first function of the pattern package, it's called thicken. And what we are doing with thicken is we actually adding a column that is of a higher um, interval, which will I call the interval. I introduced that with the presentation that I gave earlier. Did everybody attend that presentation? Because otherwise I will be repeating myself. Is there anybody who didn't do, who wasn't there, or who isn't familiar with the basics of better? Yeah, yeah I sorry, I didn't see the presentation earlier. There's yeah. no need to be sorry, but then. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Matt, for clarifying. Anybody else who didn't? It just helps Edwin to kind of yeah. gauge the level of detail and so on. Let me just check. So I, I didn't, Ed. Um, I, I didn't either. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Ed, please work, work right. to the lowest common denominator, please, if you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> I will give a quick introduction to the interval of pattern. So in the emergency selection, you see the um, um, timestamp. And that timestamp in the world of pattern. So um, let me share what I said during the presentation. So the initial idea, the motivation for pattern was that working with timestamps and date times it was to me it was a lot more frustrating than it should be in my own sense so when i try to add something of a higher hierarchy in date of times so you want to go from the seconds to the days or the month because that is a much more logical analysis level for what you intend to do each time it took me a 
crazy amount of time and a lot of dirty code where I converted dates to strings and then subsetted those strings and then converted back to date. And then I thought, hmm, maybe another level would be more helpful. So maybe I should go to weeks instead of months because months is not granular enough. And it took me a lot of time each time uh, for something that intuitively was very natural to me. Let's say, okay, I just want to know the number of occurrences in a week time and in a month time. That is something that made a lot of sense to me as a human, but as a programmer, it was increasingly frustrating. Um, so I thought, let, let me solve this, at least for myself. And if I like the solution, I will also share it to the, the wild world, wider world. And basically, the, the concept that I came up with to bridge the, the let's say, the programmer, the frustrated programmer and the human side of me was the concept of the interval. And that is, uh, you should think of the interval as the heartbeat of the data, of a, of a grid that you can overlay on the data. Um, and I will show you a few examples. So in Pattern, there's the function called get interval. And this takes a little longer because it's a lot of data. But then here you see that um, it's a second. So the second is the highest grid that you can overlay of the, on this data. And you already see that from the first records because there's one at this timestamp and one second later, there's already another event. So I could even tell that this has an interval second from the first three lines or four lines of this data set. Um, if each of the occurrences were on the full hour, so oh, this is on 40 minutes, but say it was on the full hour or each time on 40 minutes, so 1740, 1840, 1940, then the highest interval that we can overlay on this would be the interval hour. Does that make sense? Question mark? Yes, there are customers. Yes. So let me just give a little more uh, an example here. Um, Didn't prepare this, but I hope this goes well. I'm sure it goes. So if we take this thing here, um, this would have the interval date. Is, is, is there a typo on the year there, 2022, with an extra one in there? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. It will save me a lot of headaches while presenting. There's, it's in each. No, it, it's across the entire. You got it. Yeah, it's across the entire thing. Yes, thank you very much, Mohammed. Yeah, so this has the interval date. Because the difference of between DC occurrences is one day. Here it's three days. But it's, a five, it's like the highest level grid is one day that we can overlay of this data. If we change this to the third, then it will change into two days because this has a two-day gap between it and this has a two-day gap between it. So that's the concept of the interval. So you can also overlay a one-day grid on this. Um, that will be an interval one day. But the natural interval, that's the occurrence pattern, the heartbeat of this data is um, two days. And it's okay if you can skip a beat, but it's not okay, like in the concept of the interval within the pattern context, to um, have no data um, uh, or have an extra data point, let's say. Then, then the interval moves up in the hierarchy. Okay, so what I'm doing with the thicken function here is that we have this um, timestamp, which we saw was on the second level um, on the full data set. So I assume it's also on the, uh, um, for the assaults only, but it also doesn't really matter. And let us now just do thick and let's work its magic. And I'm gonna explain how it's working later. So you see that just by calling thicking and just typing in month twice, what should we do in twice, but I will come to that later. Um, we have this column added that has only the month part um, selected from each of the timestamp um, instances and then added the first day of the month. So what I try to do is I always wanted to retain a date column or a time column or date time column. And the um, um the def default naturally for a month will be the first of the month 
It doesn't have to be, but that's how Thicken, uh, Thicken works and also the rest of better work. It has a lot of intuitive default, defaults that makes it a lot easier to work with this data. Um, and these defaults will be fine, say 95% of the time. So now we want to know the number of occurrences uh, within each month. With Thicken, uh, by the way, you can also notify, notice that Thicken automatically figures out that this is the timestamp data. It checks the, the data frame coming in and it will select the date time column if there's only one. If there are multiple, it will throw an error. So if I will go Thicken on this again, uh, just maybe to add a week, then it will throw an error because it has multiple variables of class date, plus XT, plus XLT. And it's not okay with that because we cannot figure out ourselves anymore. So then we should specify by which column we want to do this. And then we can also add the week this week. So you see also that if you don't specify the second argument, which is the name of the new column to add to the data frame, if you don't do that, it will take the original and it will add the interval to it. So if we were to do it like this, then it will have timestamp month, but I'd like to have it call it month. So that's why I, so here I specify the desired interval and here I just specify the way it should be called, which is often the same thing. Now, since we have that, we can just go to the tidyverse and use the count month, see the occurrences this way. And maybe we want to make this into a nice plot. Uh, And we can see the we can see the assaults over time on a month level. Okay. Any questions from there so far? You're free to interrupt. No questions. I'll move on. Um, we can also easily go from here to the week level. Then I should also see this. Um, and this is, I think, the nice thing about Thicken is that it always returns a date time and it's very easy to change the granularity. So we can also just specify two weeks here or five weeks would even work. Everything that's accepted by the basic units of time for the, uh, in, in R. Like if you do um, this function, uh, sequence from S date, I don't know. Uh, and that is then the by argument in that. Uh, say by is month. Length out is 10. Anything that you can use here in this by thing that is also accepted by the functions in better because it's calling base r of course under the hood um so one of the nice things about thicken i think is that you can also use it if you are if you maintain a library or um a set of functions that you use your often for um for exploration, for explorative research, <laughs> you can make little wrapper functions. Say you work a lot with a data set in this kind of, in this uh, particular example, you work with the emergency data set a lot. It's actually very easy to create a wrapper function. So in this case, I don't give the data set as an argument. You of course can. And I written that down before, so I didn't want to make an error in the. Let me get a quick peek there. Yeah, I didn't want to make an error in the non-standard evaluation thing of the player. Uh, we just thicken subsequently. And 
with county interval. And maybe we make this into a nice little plot and we've done this already. Just need to. And it's not happy. Why is that? No, it's happy already. So let's see if this works. Um, so the events that we saw earlier, let's check off some of the events. So let's see. Police information. I have no. That's that's too poisoning. That sounds exciting. And this is the event we're interested in. Let's do the year. Load it into memory. Yeah. Let's see. Hazard of life coding. Oh, I probably. Did select a very sparse event. General weakness that should happen a lot. Nope. Maybe this is not a great idea. Let me try one more. Otherwise, I'll just go on not to bother you anymore. Stabbing. Apparently, I'm in a violent mood. Yes, there we go. Okay, so this has enough, enough events to make a plot like this. Um, and now we can easily go from one level to another. Just as an explorative tool, you can easily go back and forth between the intervals. So the tedious work in which you took the date time column and then had to rip out some part of it and then have it placed back into a daytime column because otherwise you could not make such a nice plot because then it was a categorical and all that, yeah, annoying part that has been automated away um, by Thicken. Uh, so Edwin, as a default... Edwin, this is this is great, by the way. Can I just uh, ask, uh, in, yes. sometimes we, we now live in a time where we get really high-frequency data, say, from... Um, um, uh, watches uh, on somebody's body and you get readings every few milliseconds and so on. Yeah. Um, is that is that data something you had in mind when you <clears throat> developed Pad R? I haven't. No, I hadn't. So basically the second is the lowest level of um, recording, like the interval. The second is the lowest level of interval. Um, so I haven't adjusted the package to that. I must also admit that I haven't been up to speed with the latest developments on that with R. I should really check again um, if that has also been like a new data type or something. Um, okay. Maybe okay. somebody but, in the audience is more knowledgeable than me on that. Uh, but if somebody is working with really high frequency data, as long as they can get it to uh, the the second granularity, then Pad R will pick it up from there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, seconds are fine. Yeah, but no, no, not more granular. At least I haven't tested with it. It could be because it's relying on base R. Yeah. That okay. as long as base R starts accommodating for it, that you basically get it out of the box. Um, but I haven't tested it at least. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, then we'll move on with, um, yeah, let's have a, big, uh, a quick glance over the arguments of Pedder. So it works pretty seamless if you don't specify anything, because as I mentioned before, 95% of the instances, the, the defaults of Pedder are fine, but there are some things that you can um, tinker with, so to say. So these are the first three I've discussed, like the incoming data, the interval you want to have, and the column name of the new added column. Then you can do the rounding. So you can think of basically rounding towards the nearest data point. So in case if the, um, in this case, the nearest month 
is would be the first of this uh, December 2015. But in some instances, you want to round up. So you want to round to the next instance, which would be the uh, January 1st of 2016, if you add something of the interval month. Well, the buy we discussed, and the starting value. So uh, you can have an offset. So if we want to, let's go to the example that we had earlier to illustrate this, which is on the month level. Um, let's go here. This is all we need to just demonstrate this. So we can have a start file that is different than the, so this is uh, taking the first of the month, but if we say want to have the fifth of the month instead, then you can. All right, so then that will be change the spanning. Uh, this is also functionality that I exposed. So you, there's also a function called thick and cust, in which you can even do a um, non-evenly spaced spanning if you if you want to for a specific use case. Um, but you can also have a non-default value for the monthly instances. And then drop, that's also a nice one that's dropping the original column and ties to earlier. This is just how you handle um, occurrences when you're right on the spanning. So if you have this one to be at a 12, 01, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, then you would be right on the spanning. And then you can say, okay, I want those to be in that one or one back. That was actually a feature request by someone who actually needed specifically to have that uh, mapped to the previous spanning. Okay, so that's basically Ficken. That's Sorry, could I uh, ask a question just uh, now, Edwin? Yeah. And I, I just wonder what happens when you have um, values that are in the incorrect format or maybe they're NA values? Is there any way to yeah. deal with those within the function or do you have to kind of process it beforehand? So incorrect values will be handled um, already by the date or the date time formatting. So if you want to, it should be in date POSIX CT or POSIX LT. So if it's an incorrect form, those functions, let's say the functions to create those instances won't look exactly, and then it will probably be a character, right? If it's in a wrong yeah. form. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, missing values are left as is. So we allow for missing values. So say if this is an NA, then this will be an NA too. Okay. Uh, because we have no way to tell what it should be, but we also don't want to break on it. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So this is our first workhorse um, called Thicken. Like it's two natural steps from an analysis. So you have your raw data, you thicken, and then you do a subsequent plotting, calculate a moving average. Um, yeah, I don't know what else you can do. Time service analysis, of course. So let's go to the second, um, which is called PAT, which is also, yeah the name giver of the uh, entire package because this was that the functionality I had also in mind when creating this. Um, and let's create a little data set here from the sole data on the daily level. So we're gonna invoke our friend Ficken again, and we're gonna count the days. Let's have a quick look what we created here. So we got, we're now counting the occurrences of assaults on a daily level, um, which the first day being one occurrence. And then what we see happening here is that there were no assaults on the 18th of December. So this is an implicit missing value. Now, if we were to go on and um, let's say we do an assault day and for illustration, we don't take the full data set, but just say take the first 30 and we go on and create a plot of this. So we take the day and we take the counts and then we do a uh, 
We're not happy. Yeah, here we go. So what happens for that 18th, and it's maybe not so obvious. Let's take a little bit lower granularity even. So what happens for the 18th is that on the 17th, we had an occurrence of two. Where are you? I think it's here so implicitly. And then here, the 18th, it's skipping over this one, where this one should go to the zero axis because there were no occurrences. But those occurrences are also missing from our data. And this happens a lot with um, going from the raw data that just registers the processes that we're measuring, like a log file, logging file, or whatever. And going to the analysis data is that the implicit missing data are, ex ex um, are not explicitly missing. So here is where the path function is coming into play. And this one takes even no arguments by default. So what's happening here is um, you see her path applied on the interval day. So going back to that uh, concept of interval again, we have the get interval function, which basically registers the heartbeat of the data. And then if it registers the correct interval, it can also infer from that which interval, which occurrences are missing. So in this um, case, the, um, the interval is daily because it's on the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, the 13th, the 14th. But then it says, hey, here it's skipping a heartbeat, as I mentioned earlier. So we can just insert one record for that for that missing occurrence. Now you see it's also inserting an NA because we don't specify um, what to do with that um, with that missing record that's now explicit. And but there is in this case we want to make it zero. So we can then invoke the function fill by value, which is ships with the um, with the package. There are also other functions from, I think, tidyr package that you can use there, but this one is, comes with the, um, uh, with the package. And it has a default value of zero. So again, they're always thinking of defaults, like what do you typically want? Yeah, maybe sometimes you want to insert 1,000, but typically you want to have zero, so, so we set it on zero. And if we recreate that plot, we should then also take that hat 15, now 16, because we have one more data point. Then we see that it now touches the zero and not skipping over. So in the previous thing, let's go back just to make this clear. You see here it's now skipping over. That's zero. But now it's we have inserted the implicit missing values. We have made them explicit. Another way you can um, use path, um, I mean, uh, no, let me first go to here. So we have the fill by value, but there's also two other functions, which is called fill by function. So you can actually specify, you can supply a function that is applied on the data to in, in, uh, impute it, but you can also fill by prevalent. So in, if we use that, then it will take the most prevalent occurrence. So in this case, that will be two. So this is more helpful for data imputation. So that's when there are missing values because of machine failure, something like that, instead of that there were no events. Any questions on this? We're good. Thank you. Another way you want to fail here, could fail here, is if we want to have, for instance, we do a, a commutative sum. So for this, we invoke the function comsum from, I think it's a base function. Um, we also, you see here, so also it's missing here. Say we take the hat of this. 
and then I should press it by this. That's not correct. Why don't you have it? Missing it back in line 40. Line 14, what are we missing? Ah, yeah. Pipe. Uh, yeah, the pipe. Thank you. Um, so here we have the incorrect skipping over um, of this part. And we can also apply path on this. But instead of um, having this, we don't want to insert this zero with zero. Let's drop the. Uh, the other column here, just for clarity. So we don't want to insert a zero here. So we don't want to do an um, uh, fill by value, but we want to actually carry this value forward. And there we have the tidy R function already. And it's called fill. Ooh, that's not what I intended. <laughs> Live coding, things go wrong. Uh, uh, I need to specify that. This is what you want. This is what you want. Yeah. Yeah. And now we see a nice um, horizontal part instead of skipping over that part and acting like there are events there. All right. I think this is um, all on the base of that. Also, some inspiration. So, Pet is great for data exploration. Um, just to have a quick function, whether a um, whether a data frame is complete, a timestamp data frame is complete on its interval. So if we again take the assault day. And we, did we count that already? Yeah. Then we can just feed this into that function. And then it can immediately detect this one is not complete. Um, it's a very helpful summary statistic or not statistic, but like a summary inside as data, part of your data exploration of, hey, we are missing events. Is that something we expect or not? before you go on and actually do the uh, do the rest of the analysis. And then one more thing on that. And I'm not going to lie, I have some stuff ready or also that I sometimes copy, not to make a fool of myself, but I also don't want to run a pre-filled script line by line because that's also not very interesting to watch. But now I'm just going to copy paste it. Um, so in this case, we are going back to the original emergency data set. Here we are. And remember that we had the town part, town part in there. Again, we're going to look at those as sold. But in this case, we're going to also include the town part. So that looks like this. So it, again, we look at the monthly data. And now we have the assaults within each of the town parts. This is, of course, very common in analysis, is that you want to have something grouped by another column. Um, if we now were to apply path on this, let's do some audience participation. What will happen if we apply path on this? No audience participation? Will it, will it add the, um, the dates, but not for each um, each town setting. Yes, so it will, by, by default, I think that's about correct. I, I didn't understand it really well because of the connection, but I think what you meant is that it will ignore the town part, right? So it will just look at the month. Yes. At least that's the right answer. <laughs> yes, that's right, yes. <laughs> yeah, so we see the original has 16, 10 rows. And then if we pad it, then we still have 16 and 10 rows, um, which is quite unlikely because we have uh, all these town parts and it's very unlikely that there will be assault victims in each of those town parts on each month. 
What we actually want to do is pat on a grouping level. So we want pat to have um, to know that it should pat within the tail parts. So if we do that, <clears throat> then you see that, for instance, for Abington here, let's look at those data a little bit more clearly. So we see for Abington, that's a very um, assault heavy town park, apparently, because there are no missing records. So there are assaults happening each single month, apparently. Yeah, but there we go. Oh. Oh, they start having assaults when COVID happened. Okay, because everybody was in probably. But here for um, uh, Ambler, so I, I have no idea what kind of data I'm looking at. So I'm just making this up on the spot, but that's probably a less uh, populated um, area or it's more upscale. There are at least there are less assaults because there have many, many months with missing values. So you see the padding has happened within the town parts. Another interesting thing here is that it says does not vary for two of the groups. So no padding applied on this. So what does that mean? It has just one single observation of a town part, and it, you cannot determine a heartbeat on a single beat, let's say the occurrences. So it failed to infer the, um, the interval here, and it just left the data as is. So thinking about this, this means that the padding function by default takes the start value and the end value of that data um, individually by each group. So we have the first and the last thing it takes for each group. Um, and that means that, um, that the data will not, that not necessarily we will create the same number of records for each of the town parts in this example. All we can do is including a start value. And um, let's just take the minimum. And we can also take an end value as the max of the entire data set. So that's not um, within the group. And now, you see instance for Abington, if we didn't take the start value, then it, and we missed that when we we're exploring the data, but apparently there was no assault in the first month. But because we did padding within the group, it just took the first value of Abington, which was this one and then it started padding all the way to the to the end but if we want to have each town part on the same um with the same overlay by the same grid then we should um specify the start value and the end value i think we're about to wrap up if you also want to leave some time for questions um let's look at some other functions. Um, so this is a little function to and let's also include a value just how many <laughs> Was it a question? No, it's just someone that just jumped. Okay. I just muted them. Okay. Um, yeah. Yes. So, bad ins. So pad on an integer instead of a date or time variable. So very helpful for years. Works exactly the same as the pad function, but just takes integers to pad by and not a date time variable. And one last thing I think is really worthwhile sharing. Um, 
having these, and this was a little bit of an afterthought for better. So this is was also introduced, I think, one or two years after the initial release. Um, is that one thing that also nagged me a little bit is if you want to create um, a sequence of dates, there's a lot of code going into that. So say you want to create the first of the months for a year, like so, which is the interval month in the better context, then you have to specify quite some code, if you ask me. Uh, so th this is how you would do that in base R. So Pather, Pather provides um, two wrapper functions over this sequence spanning, so sequence date and sequence POSIX. Uh, and span date, you just have to specify the minimum uh, number of, of the minimum uh, information that is needed to infer what the interval you desire wants. So if you can think back of the interval, if we want to have something on the month level, as we want to have here, the only thing we need to specify is this. So this is specifying year and month. And OK, then we all the other things we want to have on the default level. So and pad, pad, the, these functions just um, basically apply the same logic, but reverse it. So from in Pattern in, in pad and, and uh, Ficken, you take the data and you get the interval from it. And then this time you just take a single data point and also you infer the um, interval from it, but then you create a spanned factor of dates and times. And the same, you can also work for time. Then you do need a string if you want. So say we want to have this on the hour. We specify the hour here, and then it will go on and span as something with hours. If you go on and also specify the minute, then it will go on and span minutes instead. OK, I think it's 5, 450, 350 in the UK, of course. So are there any questions left? Because this is basically all I wanted to share. Uh, well, I just want to say thank you very much. Uh, that was amazing. Thank you. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat, so you're welcome to unmute yourself. Oh. Yeah. I, do, so I do have a thank you. Yeah. yeah, I do have a question. Um, thanks, Edwin. This is looks like a really good package. And my question is, if you have a data frame with multiple date columns in, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess I haven't looked at the syntax, but I guess you can somehow specify which of those columns you want to perform these functions on. Is that yeah. just something you feed in at the start? I don't know if you've got an example of that, maybe, please. Yeah, so you can do that on the on each of the functions that we actually um, discussed. So thick and, and bad, they won't work if you don't do that, because there is no way of telling which one you want. So we set basically everything has put to de default, set to default. That makes sense. And in this case, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, you can take the first alphabetically, but like from a from a, there's there's no way you can sell. So there's this buy argument. Yeah. In both thick and, and bad. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Which uh, specifies which column is, but so it's it default value is null. And if it's null, it will figure out the only daytime column if it's there. Yeah. If it's not, it will throw an error. Or if there's multiple, it will then throw an error. And uh, yeah, we can we can do this with let's say the emergency. Yeah. Mm. Typing is hard. End of the week. So this is has now the month, but note that we now have two day time columns here. So the timestamp and the month. And if we now to try to apply thicken again, but now apply weak, then it will say, okay, this contains multiple variables. Please specify which variable to use. I if, see, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
It's different for the fill by um, value. Where are you fill by value? Or no, I used you. Uh, oh, we replaced it here. Okay. So the fill by value, um, remember that after padding all the other columns, so we now make very simple examples with just one value, but it could be that you have a data frame with a dozen columns next to your daytime column. Um, and then it will by default just do all the columns um, unless you specify specifically which one you want to to uh, to fill. Um, but that's the other way around. So that's not, oh, that's not the other way around. That's not for the daytime column, but that's for all the non-daytime columns after padding. Okay, great. Thanks very much for that. Sorry for the background noise. I got my toddler here with me. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Would that be all? Yeah, it doesn't seem we have any more questions. I just wanted to mention uh, that we have a, an evaluation form. And I have put the link in the chat. We have a minute to just bear with those. And I think you will get, uh, like the attendees will get a, an email uh, with the evaluation form. Other than that, no, uh, that, was, that was great. Thank you very much, Evelyn. Okay. Sharing. Thank you for having me. Hi. Thank you all for listening in. Yeah, thank you, Evelyn. Very okay. uh, useful package. Thank you. You're most welcome. Let me stop recording.